I have this idea for a movie and I haven't had time to write it and I've had it forever. Basically the idea is, who do you like? You like Ryan Gosling? Ryan Gosling, this quiet, reclusive guy. He works at an old folks home and he's starting to have some pretty dark impulses. He's always had pretty dark impulses. He had a very fucked up relationship with his parents. We see him trying to talk to them. They both don't like him. He's viewed as a mistake and a burden. Apparently he had a lot of learning disabilities. Our first image of this guy, pretty dark first image, is that he has a pet cat and he's choking it and then letting it breathe. And the cat sort of goes, and he starts choking it again, and then lets it breathe. And finally the cat scratches him and he lets it go and starts crying. This guy has problems. He's ended up in his 30s working at this geriatric home. It's basically a hospice. He's surrounded by death. He has no human connections. His only friend and real human connection is this Jamaican lady who's a bit older than him and is divorced and has an older kid who doesn't speak to them who works at the hospice with him. She's another nurse. And she thinks he's sweet and quiet, but she's also very lonely. And every night he goes to the people sleeping, drugged in their comas, and takes a syringe and draws blood, and he uses that blood to paint and make art that he then destroys in shame because he can't believe he did it. But we can see it. He can see it. It's only a matter of time before this guy commits a murder. This is a burgeoning serial killer. Finally, one night, the Jamaican lady says, I'll cook you dinner, and he goes, okay, and he lets her come over to his house. And during dinner, he says, you know, sometimes I just want to hurt people. She goes, everybody feels that way. It's normal, honey. You know, don't worry about it. And then he has this elaborate fantasy of getting behind her and just stabbing her in the throat and saying, this is what you get for caring. This is what you get for caring about me. But it's just a fantasy. And he snaps out of it. And he goes like, I need to get out of here. So during the dinner, he just leaves he gets in his car and starts driving. He lives in like Pasadena, outside of LA. He drives up, 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 up to Northern California by Big Sur to all the big bridges. He goes to the edge of a bridge in the woods. He knows he has to stop himself before he hurts someone. And this is the only way that he can see. There's no other choice. So he goes to the side of the bridge and he's breathing. He lets go of the bridge. He starts to tip forward and then he hears a scream. I was like, huh? And down in the woods, way below him, you can see a naked man running with blood all over. He stares at this guy way down there. The guy disappears into the woods. He hears the noises of some motorcycles or quad bikes or something. He's like, he's so startled by that. He ends up just driving to this like shit kicker redneck bar and just sitting there. He tries to call his parents. They don't pick up. He leaves them a message, which is basically just him ranting and going like, I'm going to fucking kill myself before I kill someone and you made me this. And just, he sounds crazy. And that's when he meets this girl. The girl is this beautiful sort of sweet, kind of rednecky girl, you know, NorCal redneck, so like hippie redneck, peace burning man sort of person. And she's so funny and she's so into him immediately because he's wearing a song. But he's like sweet and quiet and she just feels connected to him. And it's suddenly this beautiful little romantic scene of them talking and she's such a free spirit and he's so uptight. It's like a manic pixie dream girl. And he's like, I can't believe that, you know, I found someone in his head. He doesn't even... He can't even process that someone would be being so affectionate to him. And she's like, well, what are you doing later? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, well, what are you doing right now? And so they go out to his car. They're talking in his car and smoking weed. And he's never smoked weed before. They start making out. And she gets on top of him. There's a screwdriver under his seat. And the more she's touching him, you can tell that he's starting to tense up and get scared. And he reaches down for the screwdriver. And as he's reaching for it, reaching for it, he's imagining just plunging it into her back. And then he stops himself and he just lets himself kiss this woman. They're hooking up and then suddenly she goes, <laughs> bangs, she's a fucking vampire. It's like, ah! takes the fucking screwdriver, stabs her in the side of the head. She grabs him, throws him through the windshield of his own car from the inside. He goes crashing to the ground on the outside. 
goes rolling. The car starts rolling forward because the parking brake is off. She gets out of the car, like, trying to pull the screwdriver out of her head. He takes a fucking hand and wrenches it, and she falls to the ground because gives brain damage. And she gets run over by the car, but she's still alive. He's like, oh, my God, what have I done? But she's still alive and threatening him and saying, when my friends get here, you have no idea what we are. You have no idea what we'll do to you. You think you can treat me this way? And he stuffs her into his trunk. And he's just staring at her in the trunk. And at first she's like threatening him. But then slowly the threats stop. Because he's just staring at her. And she goes, what are you doing? And he goes, there are more like you who I can hurt. But they don't die. And she goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he closes the trunk. So what we're dealing with here for this movie is essentially serial killer versus vampires. It's Dexter versus the Lost Boys in the woods of Northern California. Think Blue Ruin uh, levels of violence, except low-key supernatural a la near dark. So not like flying vampires, more like just scary rednecky vampires fighting against a person with no compulsion, no conscience, who has been waiting his whole life to inflict pain. It's worth saying, I don't want to kill any of the vampires. I don't want to turn anyone to dust in this movie. Because his fetish and obsession is causing pain, what I really want is for him to do stuff to vampires we just flatly haven't seen. He cuts to one of their Achilles tendons, leaves the guy in the woods to be devoured by wolves, and when he comes back to him, the guy's all torn up. He's just going like, kill me, kill me. And he pushes him into a creek, rests rocks on him so that he's up to his neck in the creek and then pushes a rock over him so no one will ever find him. Another guy, he has, after he hits him with a car, he has one of the vampires down with his bones broken and pours gasoline into his mouth and then lights him on fire from the inside and hides him in a drainage ditch. So he'll be down there for decades. About midway through the movie, he finds their house on the beach in Big Sur, this like fucked up old house where every night the basement floods when the tide comes in, which has humans in cages in it. One of the humans is this woman who's a fucking vampire hunter, this fucking badass chick in one of these cages who's been locked up. She's like 45, and she was on her way to fucking stop these vampires and has been hunting them for years, but now has ended up in a cage trapped. And at first, when he gets down to all those cages, when he finally ends up there, there's this moment where he's like... I have all these people in cages. Should I maybe just not tell anyone? But she manages to connect with him and say like, no, you can help us. You have to help us. What's wrong with you? And he's like, yeah, oh yeah, of course, yeah. But working with her, he finds this fucking, fucking job, this vocation of being a vampire hunter. The final vampire, who's like the most brutal and evil, they get into this incredible fight in the basement where uh, that floods every night. And he breaks the guy's leg with a sledgehammer. Our guy gets hugely fucked up during this fight. Our lead gets hugely fucked up. The vampire's holding him down and is going to bite him when the vampire hunter distracts him. And our guy, the serial killer, bites the vampire's throat and tears his throat out with his teeth. The vampire's like, like that. Then he pins his hand under part of the foundation of the house and then pins his leg with a sledgehammer and a post hole that they were using to repair the house. So the vampire is pinned like this. Every night, the water will go over his head and drown him. And every morning, a single slat of sunlight will come through, in through the fucking fucked up house and burn him horribly, but not enough to kill him. Ultimately, it's a movie about purpose and about an artist finding their passion. It's about a guy who his entire life has hidden who he really is because he was afraid to hurt anyone, finding a way to turn that into a meaningful career. The movie ends with our guy just feeling the wind, covered in a vampire's blood, riding on the back of a vampire killer's motorcycle. It's beautiful.